Good afternoon, folks. Gary Tucker coming at you live from the middle of the Pacific Ocean, somewhere near Smokehouse Bay. Uh, I came home from work today and there was a kayak, and I haven't been in a kayak since 1988. But I decided I was going to take one out for a go, and here I am. And what a beautiful day it is for it. There's two primal instincts that exist within each and every one of us. One of those is a form of the most primal fear, the instinct to survive. And uh, I don't think there's anything bad about this particular instinct. It's absolutely essential for most organisms, including humans. <sighs> However, it's limiting. When I was five years old, the principal of the public school that I went to asked my parents to come in and they said, look, every time someone even comes close to your son or they bump into him, he overreacts. He turns around and he punches them in the face or he pushes them onto the ground. Um, this is usually an indication that there's violence in the home. And they asked my dad, is there violence in the home? And he lied to their faces and said, no, there's no violence in the home. Well, there was. There was. Right from birth, when you're young, your primary caretakers are viewed by you instinctively almost as a demigod. Because without them providing food and shelter and warmth, you can't survive. And we know that as living organisms. We know that instinctively, that we need them to survive. And so, in lieu of judging them as being right or wrong, we accept that everything they do is okay and that it's right. And so, if you're susceptible to some form of abandonment uh, in instances such as physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, or mental abuse, these forms of abandonment, they trigger this fear. They trigger abandonment and this fear for your very life, your fear for survival. And what you do is you begin to shut down and you exclude other people from your life. You minimize your contact with others because you don't want to take any further risks that might jeopardize your survival. The other instinct that we have within us is a desire for infinite expansion. We want it all. We're not satisfied going from point A to point B. As human beings, when we get to point B, we want to get to point C, and then point D, and then point E. And ultimately, what we really want is ultimate expansion. We want to become the whole universe. We want to accept the whole universe. We want to be a part of the whole universe. And that is ultimate expansion. So here we have these two diametrically opposed forces acting within us simultaneously, and we have to come to terms with them. <sighs> I don't know if you've ever had one of those days where you found yourself with about 10 kilograms too much of hashish and been pulled over by the police and got arrested and thrown in a prison in Africa, but well, that happened to me one day. And man, was I afraid! Oh my God! I'd been drinking like an alcoholic for about 15 years. I was 30 pounds overweight. Um, I had pretty low self-esteem at the time. And although I was on an evolutionary path, determined to become a healthier human being, oh my God, I found myself in a deep pile of shit in a country where I didn't know anybody, didn't speak any of the languages. Everybody was hanging around in groups according to their own country. There was a group of prisoners from Morocco and a group of prisoners from Spain and another group from France and Greece and Germany and oh my God, but guess who was the only Canadian? Hello, hello. <laughs> I was scared shitless. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know in retrospect, but um, I was a good fighter. I'd had some formal training in Taekwondo. I'd played hockey in Bruce County for most of my life, and that was enough to have uh, fine-tuned my basic fighting skills. And I needed them to live. I needed them to survive when I first got to prison. It was a horrifying environment. I was in a crazy, insane asylum of a prison called the Rose Garden, Los Roselles. 
on the continent of Africa in a Spanish property called Ceuta. I looked out of my prison cell window and on the other side of the Mediterranean I could see the rock of Gibraltar. I suppose that was cool. <laughs> I'd rather have just looked at a picture of it on the internet to be quite honest with you. At any rate, I began doing push-ups and sit-ups and I was practicing martial arts morning to night and doing chin-ups. I dropped 30 pounds in the first month and I toned up and I got in the best shape of my life. And uh, I suppose I was somewhat of a feared figure in the prison environment because I, I never lost a fight. And I was counting on that uh, for my survival. Then one day, I'd been in prison a full year and uh, I was practicing martial arts and I was doing a flying front kick and there was a snap that sounded like a rifle, a rifle had gone off and my right anterior cruciate ligament became separated at all four points where it connects to the inner part of the knee and I was in excruciating pain and I fell to the ground screaming, holding my knee and I couldn't walk. And I couldn't walk for another month and a half. So here I was, all of a sudden, the most vulnerable person in a prison full of lunatics. And uh, there was virtually nothing I could do at this point to protect myself. Well, I'd been doing a lot of reading. I'd been studying Gurdjieff and Ospensky. Um, book, a book called The Fourth Way had introduced me to some, some forms of meditation that included intentionally not using your right arm for a 24-hour period and remaining conscious of that or gazing for hours at the brightest spot in a cloud without actually staring at it and just letting your mind go silent and it was during uh, during one of these gazing without staring episodes where I had an epiphany where this where the universe opened up for me and absorbed me into it and showed me that all of these people that I feared we're just an extension of myself and I an extension of them. And my fear left me at that point. Now, I had had this habit. I had established this habit where I would go into the corner of the prison yard and put my back into the corner and face the three, four, 500 people who were out in the prison yard so that I could see anybody that was coming towards me and have some type of an advance warning if I was gonna be attacked. But after this epiphany, after this opening up, I did something I'd never done before. And I went into that corner and I took my chair and I put it 180 degrees around the table and I faced the corner. And my back was to those 500 crazy lunatics behind me. And there I sat writing and reading and studying my books with absolute fearlessness. And it was genuine. It was absolutely genuine. And what I learned from that was that physical power, the, about, the, the ability to dominate somebody physically is a very limited form of power. Spiritual power, mental power, intellectual power, the power of consciousness far surpasses that. They're not even comparable. They're not even comparable. I've tried to maintain a degree of that consciousness to this very day. I have no desire to dominate somebody physically. I want to always remember that, uh, as Robert Heinlein expressed in the book Stranger in a Strange Land, that thou art God. Whenever I'm looking at another living being, a human, an animal, any type of a creature, there is an element of God in them. And that's the part of them that I want to recognize. And that same component is a part of myself. And I want to accentuate and focus on that part of myself that is a part of the life force and in tune with everybody else and every other living thing on the planet. I think that's what it's all about. I do know that I continue to live without fear. I've had five heart attacks. I got seven stints in me. Man, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I've, uh, Maybe I've got some kind of Guinness Book of World Record thing happening here. I don't know. Maybe I'm going for it anyway. But uh, it was only after I got out in the middle of the ocean here when I realized, oh my God, you crazy bastard. You, what are you doing out here kayaking with your health record? But, uh, you know, honest to God, I'm not afraid.
and I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be, and I'm not. This is what I was talking about in my last video. When I talked about wanting to live my life as an expression of joyfulness, when I, I talked about wanting every one of my acts to be an expression of exuberance. Well, that includes coming home from work and without thought, hopping into a kayak and going out into the middle of the ocean. It's a blast. I highly recommend it. Folks, I hope you're all having a good day. And if you're having a bad day, I hope you find the power within yourself to overcome it. Till next time. Ciao.